Three years ago, my life was feeling a little out of my control. I had just moved to a different country, I was on my own and trying really hard to adapt to being a first year uni student while trying to pass all of my exams. This was supposed to be the time of my life, but it just didn't feel like it. Instead, I felt stuck. I was constantly trying to make positive changes in my life, but constantly failing. One of the things I struggled with the most was going to the gym. I could never stay consistent and I was really insecure in how I looked. This went on for a while until I asked myself, what if I don't change? Fear of remaining trapped in this cycle of dissatisfaction really scared me. So I changed. I started going to the gym, started building a routine, and I quickly realized that what I didn't like about my life wasn't my body. It was the way I was living life. I realized that having a daily routine that included working out didn't only improve my physical appearance, but most importantly, it improved my confidence, my self-belief, and my discipline. So in this video, we'll be talking about how to not only build a healthy routine, but how to actually change your life. In order to change your life, you need to want to change. And you might be thinking, well, I clicked on this video, so of course I wanna change my life, like what do you mean? But the truth is a lot of people, especially around New Year's, they just set goals for the sake of setting goals. Just something that looks good on paper, that makes them feel good about themselves in the moment, but they're not actually that serious or committed to actually making a change in their life. So you need to get really clear on why, why you want to change your life. How is changing your life gonna make you feel better or happier? And make sure that your goals are something truly meaningful to you. They need to be connected to your core values and your idea of life in order for them to actually be meaningful to you. Because only then will you be willing to put in the work that it takes to achieve those goals. Try to visualize what it truly would be like to change your life. How would it feel? How would it improve your life? Would you be happier? Would it actually mean something to you? There's this funny thing where you wanna change your life, but at the same time, you're kind of afraid because you're afraid of failing at changing your life. You're afraid that the business you're trying to build is gonna fail, that no one's gonna watch the YouTube videos that you put out, or that you will get a new job and you will realize that you're not smart enough to do it. This is the fear of failure, a fear that a lot of people have. And this is a big difference between people who successfully change their lives and those who don't. People who successfully change their life and improve and keep doing better constantly feel the fear of failure, but they do it anyway. They just go for it. They build a business. They film themselves and put their thoughts out on the internet. They submit that job application. They say yes to new experiences that might help them, but that are also really scary. They get comfortable in the uncomfortable and they embrace this feeling of being scared shitless. I'm sorry, what is a better way of framing that? They embrace the feeling of being really scared and doing it anyway. The fear of failure is also usually not really the fear that your business will fail or your YouTube channel will fail or that you won't get the job that you like. It's rather the fear that because you got rejected, because your business failed, this will finally show you that you are lazy and you are not worth it and you are incapable of doing anything. And that it will also show that to everyone else around you. This is sadly oftentimes the underlying belief behind the fear of failure. Because if your YouTube channel fails, you can make another one. If you get rejected from a job, you can always apply for another one. Another job will come up at some point. But the thought that other people will realize that you are a failure because you got rejected from a job, that's way scarier. To be completely honest, I have struggled a lot with limiting beliefs, with thinking negatively about myself, and I've worked on it a lot. And the conclusion I always come to is that People who love me, my friends, my family, people who always support me, they will support me even if I get rejected from a job, even if I have a failed business. It doesn't matter to them because it doesn't change anything about who I am. So why would it matter to me? I've learned to reframe the way I think about failure because failure is not the moment where you fail. It's the moment where you give up. 
I don't think I phrased that well. Let me explain. Failure doesn't happen in the moment where you get rejected from a job or your YouTube video flops. It happens in the moment where you decide to give up on trying to find another job, on trying to improve your CV, when you decide to never film a YouTube video ever again. The funny thing is, once you start thinking about failure this way, you realize you actually have a choice to not fail because you're not gonna fail until you give up. So why would you give up? It doesn't mean doing the same thing that just hasn't been working over and over again and just hoping that one day magically something will happen and it will work. Keep going in the sense of keep improving, learn from the past, learn from mistakes and try to do better. For more than a year I filmed almost only vlogs on this channel and while the channel was slowly growing and I enjoyed making the videos and some people enjoyed watching them, it just wasn't really working. So I started making these videos where I think about what I would have liked to hear a year ago or two years ago. And then I share my thoughts on that topic. And I like filming these videos and people also seem to like them way more than when I was just doing vlogs. I enjoy filming my day-to-day -day life. So every now and then I also post some day-to-day -day stuff like a day in the life, a morning routine. But my channel really started growing when I first didn't give up, but also changed my approach a little bit. I never stopped making YouTube videos. I just tried something else and that ended up working. Also, if you wanna see more day-to-day -day stuff, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I post stories, I post reels on there. Now that you've decided that you actually wanna change, it's time to do something about it. But a common theme is that we try to change everything about our life at the same time. We go from sleeping in late and being late for work every single day to try to wake up earlier, work out, meditate, journal, write half a book and spend time with our partner and run a half marathon all before 9 a.m. and still be on time to work. And spoiler alert, it's just not gonna work, you know? It, it just won't. So don't try to change like 20 areas of your life at the same time. Focus on one thing at a time. Have a really clear plan for how you're gonna achieve that goal. Get very clear on what your action steps are to wake up early or start going to the gym more. I actually have some videos planned for those topics, so make sure to subscribe to see them. They're gonna be coming out in a week or two. A good way to figure out what to prioritize is the Pareto Principle. This is also known as the 80-20 rule that can be applied in multiple different areas of life, but it basically states that 20% of activities or time invested will lead to 80% of the outcome. So what you need to do is to figure out what those 20% of activities are. Do you think that waking up earlier is gonna be the key to changing your life the most? Do you think that journaling might do that? What is the thing that is gonna lead to the 80% of the desired outcome? You find that and there you have your starting point. That's the first thing you're gonna focus on. So start making a clear plan for it, put it in your calendar, track your progress, do all of those things, but focus your efforts on this one thing. The thing is, progress in one area of your life will most likely lead to progress in another area, and then another, and then another. It's a chain reaction. If you say that the most important thing is to wake up earlier, maybe that also means now you have more time for going to the gym. So going to the gym is gonna become easier. Now that you're going to the gym, maybe you feel a little bit more motivated to eat healthier. So that also becomes easier. And then you just build from there. But don't try to overwhelm yourself with 10 different things at the beginning. Focus on one thing, the most important thing. And the other things will follow once you slowly start figuring stuff out. We've been talking a lot about exercise and working out and for a good reason. Like I said, building a consistent workout habit is maybe the best thing you can do for yourself. And it's not about changing your body, changing the way you look or any physical benefits. Yes, there are physical benefits which are amazing. Exercise will relieve stress, you get improved bone density, stronger muscles, a clearer mind, better heart health, lower stress levels. But while you're building your workout habit, you learn so many things that you can then apply to your everyday life. I used to be really undisciplined and whenever something would just be difficult and I didn't want to do it, I would just not do it. Going to the gym has taught me that consistency is the only way to achieve some things. You can't just go to the gym for a week and then hope to see progress. That's the beauty of it. You need to keep showing up for a while until you see progress. It teaches you resilience, 
self-discipline because it teaches you that even when it's raining outside and you want to stay in bed and sleep it's important to get up and to go to the gym because that's what you said you would do it also teaches you that sometimes the most progress that you make is when things are the most difficult you know when you're doing the last rep and it just it hurts it physically hurts your muscles are trembling but you still do it because you know you can and you are capable of doing that last rep and that really shows you that sometimes you just need to keep going exercise is also one of the highest forms of self-care because it's a really difficult thing to do it's not as fun as putting on a face mask and watching Netflix. That's also self-care. It's a nice way of self-care. But exercise really shows us that sometimes the best thing we can do for ourselves is the thing that is the most difficult and which is the path of highest resistance. You need self-care. You need to take time for yourself and to rest recover, to spend time with yourself, to journal or just watch a movie or do your face mask, take a bubble bath, grab a coffee and a brownie and sit down with a friend. But sometimes that's not really the self-care we need. Sometimes the best thing we can do for ourselves in that moment is to sit down and study or to pack our gym bag and go to the gym. Sometimes it's sitting down and tackling all of the things that you've been avoiding submitting your tax reports, calling a bank, making a doctor's appointment. Sometimes it's the thing that's not fun at all. As a really emotional person, I can definitely say that sometimes self-care and self-love is listening less to our emotions and doing something even if it's difficult because it needs to get done. And because deep down we know that that is the best thing for us. So while you're trying to reach your goals and you're chasing your dream life, don't forget self-care, but also remember that self-care comes in many forms. And sometimes the most difficult thing to do is the one that we actually need the most. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I just want you to know that you can do anything you set your mind to. You can reach all of your goals. You got this, I believe in you, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. So now you know how to change your life, but do you wanna hear more about how to build a consistent workout routine? Click here.